Hey y'all, Sarah here with Cooking with the First Ladies, and this week we will be talking about Sarah Polk and Rosalind Carter. Um, not only was Sarah Polk born on this day, September 4th, 1803, uh, but it's also National Peanut Day, and the Carters could not be more perfect. Um, we will be making uh, Sarah Polk's hickory nut cake and corn pone, as well as Rosalind Carter's peanut butter pie and peanut soup. Uh, now, Sarah Polk was actually born right here in Middle Tennessee in Murfreesboro. Uh, she was sent with her sister to a female academy in North Carolina, which was one of the only institutions for higher education for women during that time. Uh, she married James Knox Polk on New Year's Day in 1824 when she was 20 years old. Uh, supposedly, only after she joked with him, they could only marry after he had been elected to political office. Um, Andrew Jackson also supposedly encouraged uh, their relationship as he had gotten really close to Polk, making him somewhat of his political protege, even earning him the nickname Young Hickory in response to Jackson being known as Old Hickory. Uh, during James Polk's time as a congressman, uh, Sarah experienced a lot of political and social life um, during several administrations, including uh, the administrations of John Quincy Adams, Andrew Jackson, and Martin Van Buren. Uh, she had the advantage of having the ability to focus on James' political career and made her one of the few politicians' wives who could actually be such a part of the social circles with his political peers, um, as she did not have her own household at the time and they had no children, which was extremely rare for women during that time. Um, even though she wasn't used to running a large household, one account states she once served 150 courses at one of her dinners. Uh, but also contrary to this, uh, she once sat down at a formal dinner and a guest had to point out that there were no napkins on the table. Um, in difference to the first ladies before her, uh, she fully supported James's political ambitions and his rise to the presidency. Uh, she also changed the lighting in the White House from candle to gas and really disliked more antiquated ideas. Um, instead, she leaned towards more technological advancements. Uh, President Polk once said of her during his term, none but Sarah knew so intimately my private affairs. Uh, she was a politician, counselor, nurse, and an emotional resource, he said. Uh, one of her disagreements with her husband, however, was over the federal banking system. Uh, unfortunately, as well, she really didn't support the women's suffrage movement as she didn't feel that she needed what they were advocating. Um, Sarah could have made a huge difference, uh, being one of the most powerful ladies at the time and the first first lady to be outwardly political. Um, she was also very educated as well as sociable, uh, which came in handy because her husband was known as a workaholic. Uh, and many would rather talk to Sarah because of her personality. Uh, when James was elected president in 1845, uh, Sarah Polk continued to enjoy being part of politics um, and tried to help her husband with writing speeches and gave advice and with warning him of overwork, would often try to lighten his load, and he would often ask her to read articles, etc., to try to help him. Um, James Polk is also the only president in history to have kept all of his campaign promises. Um, he did only make four. Um, she was very, uh, Sarah was very religious as well and did not attend theaters um, or horse races or anything of that nature. And although she attended the inaugural ball, she did not dance. Uh, she also banned dancing, hard liquor, and card games at official receptions. Uh, so she was ultimately nicknamed Sahara Sarah. Although some accounts stated um, that the Polks never even served wine, uh, one dinner attendee wrote in her diary details of a four-hour White House dinner for 40 people. Uh, and there was glasses of six different wines from pink champagne to ruby port and uh, said that it formed a rainbow around each of the plates. Uh, Sarah also began the tradition for playing Hail to the Chief as the president walked in as James was quite short and she supposedly wanted it to be known uh, that he was entering. Um, so first up, Sarah Polk's hickory nut cake, which was a favorite of the Polks. Um, so in order to make uh, the hickory nut cake, you're going to preheat the oven to 350, uh, lightly butter and flour a tube pan and then set that aside. Uh, take two sticks of butter and beat them until they're creamy and add two cups of sugar and continue to beat that until it's mixed. 
Uh, then add four egg yolks and mix together thoroughly. Uh, take three cups of flour, two teaspoons baking powder, a half a teaspoon of salt, and set that aside. Uh, then mix together four of the egg whites and beat it until they form peaks and set that aside. Stir one teaspoon lemon juice and one cup of whole milk into the mixture. Add the flour mix and milk mixture into the butter, butter mixture, excuse me, alternating very slowly. Uh, next, beat in one cup chopped hickory nuts or pecans. Uh, finally, fold in the egg whites until it's fully combined and bake for about 60 minutes. A little side note about hickory nuts, which were much more common uh, trees in the 1800s, uh, but they are very similar to pecans. But back in the day, it was a tradition for people to gather the hickory nuts. Uh, so you can also make a simple sugar glaze with one and a half cups powdered sugar, three tablespoons of milk, or you can use water, and two tablespoons vanilla. Uh, just stir the milk in uh, really slowly until it's combined. Uh, then you can pour it on top of the cake and drizzle it. And you can add some chopped pecans or uh, some hickory nuts if you happen to find them. Uh, now, one recipe for Sarah Polk that I will not be cooking is baked robin. Uh, supposedly, it was a favorite of hers um, and was served so beautifully that the bird uh, actually almost looked real. However, if you are interested, um, there's actually a recipe from a cookbook published in 1890. It says to cover the bottom of a pie dish with thin slices of beef and fat um, of bacon over which lay 10 or 12 robins. Uh, previously rolled in flour, stuffed, seasoned with a teaspoon of salt, a quarter of pepper, uh, a chopped parsley, um, and some shallots. Uh, lay a bay leaf over it um, and a gill of broth and cover with three quarters of a pound of half puff taste. Bake one hour in a moderate oven. Shake well to make the gravy in the pie form a kind of sauce and serve quite hot. Um, so again, one that I am not interested in trying. Um, so just a little bit more about Sarah Polk. Uh, during their 25 year marriage, they never had any children, uh, which some believe was due to the fact that James had had a bladder stone surgery when he was young. Uh, they were actually the only presidential couple, couple to never have children while together. Uh, they did, however, raise their nephews um, after James' brother passed away, Sam and Bill, who were troublemakers, and one was eventually arrested for murder. Um, also, after her husband passed away, Sarah fostered and unofficially adopted her great niece, Sarah Polk Fall, who was nicknamed Sally. Uh, she treated her um, as her own daughter, and they actually lived together at Polk Place in Nashville until Sarah passed away in 1891. Uh, now, the Polk House here in Middle Tennessee, down in Columbia, um, has several neat pieces belonging to the Polks on display at the home. Uh, they have a fan that was carried by Sarah Polk at the inauguration uh, that has the former presidents as the pattern, um, also including James as the 11th. Um, they also have a few items they received as gifts. Now, the Polks only accepted very small, very personal gifts, um, such as a model of General Tom Thumb's foot from P.T. Barnum, moccasins and a beaded bag from visiting Native Americans, and an inkwell made of lava rock from Mount Vesuvius. Um, now, another recipe attributed to Sarah Polk is corn pone. Uh, this recipe calls for a cup of cornmeal, half a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of baking powder, two tablespoons bacon drippings, uh, which I, of course, substituted with equal amount of oil. Um, and finally, you will need a cup of milk. Uh, stir together all the ingredients um, and put the batter into a cast iron skillet. Um, now, traditionally, you'd make them um, more like little pancakes, um, or you can make one large corn pone in a skillet, such as this. Um, another way to serve it in a more traditional fashion, as the Native Americans did, um, is to form uh, the corn um, meal into balls, wrap them in a corn husk, and bake on 350 degrees for about 30 to 45 minutes. Um, these can be served uh, with butter, jam, or honey. Um, I tried making both the full skillet um, and uh, the in the husks. Uh, so Sarah Polk, after attending Zachary Taylor's inauguration, uh, the Polks headed back home to, again, Polk Place in Nashville. Um, only three months later, James Polk passed away from cholera, uh, which gave him the shortest retirement of any president. Um, afterwards, uh, Sarah did become a bit of a, a recluse for several years, but did host Presidents Rutherford B. Hayes and Grover Cleveland, Cleveland excuse me, and would receive honors in his name. 
Uh, she was good friends with Andrew Jackson and his family, um, as well as Dolly Madison. After life at the White House, um, Sarah eventually did become more active in social and political circles. Um, one of her most proud accomplishments was pressing an electric button to turn on the lights for the Cincinnati World Fair in 1877. Uh, the cord was ran just for her to her house as she was too old to travel that far at the time. Um, Sarah also embraced the role of a widow um, and mourning practices of the Victorian era and wore black for the rest of her life. Uh, Sarah also struggled a bit with money until she began receiving uh, $5,000 a year from the government in 1884 as a pension. Uh, Sarah was eventually buried next to her husband, originally at their home in Nashville, and was later reinterred with him at the Tennessee State Capitol, uh, where they remain today. Uh, when Cold Place was demolished in 19 1901 is when they were moved to the state capitol. Uh, she was also the longest living first lady after her husband died as she lived for 42 years after his death. And she has the longest retirement and widowhood uh, together of any previous uh, first ladies. Uh, so next up, uh, let's talk about Rosalind Carter. Uh, Rosalind, who was born in Plains, Georgia in 1927, always went by her second name instead of her first, which was Eleanor. Uh, now some actually have claimed that she was named after Eleanor Roosevelt, um, but that actually wasn't the case. Uh, Rosalind's mother uh, was an extremely hard worker, um, especially after the passing of her husband, and her mother uh, worked many jobs to support the family, including dairy farming, a part-time job at a flower shop, which actually she was still working at even when the Carters uh, entered the White House and began their term there, um, and also uh, worked in the school cafeteria and for the postal service. Uh, Rosalind directly credits her excellent work ethic to her mother. Uh, she married Jimmy Carter at the age of 18 in 1946 after they had met through her friend and his sister. Uh, she initially refused his proposal, uh, thinking they had not been dating long enough, but accepted his next one a few months later. Uh, for the first seven years of their marriage, they lived in six different states uh, during his time in the Navy. Uh, so how does Rosalind Carter tie into National Peanut Day? Uh, well, the Carter's family had always owned a peanut farm in their hometown in Georgia. And in 1953, after James, uh, excuse me, Jimmy Carter's father passed away, uh, they returned in order to take over the family peanut business. Um, so first up, Rosalind uh, had a peanut soup uh, recipe that's kind of associated with her. Um, it's a very simple recipe with very few ingredients. So first you're gonna saute a fourth a cup of uh, finely chopped onions and a tablespoon of butter until soft, uh, but not until they when they're turning brown. Um, next, stir in two and a fourth cups of milk and one can of condensed cream of chicken soup. Um, heat that up, but don't let it boil. Uh, lastly, stir in a fourth a cup chopped salted peanuts, um, and then you uh, serve that garnet and garnish uh, with peanuts, parsley, and paprika. Uh, so while we garnish, a little more about Rosalind. Uh, she was the first candidate's wife to make a campaign promise of her own, which was that she would launch legislation uh, reform for the mentally ill. Uh, she also traveled the country uh, for a couple years prior um, to his um, campaign in order to boost his image and help secure the nomination. Uh, when he was elected, uh, they brought back a tradition that actually had not been seen uh, since Thomas Jefferson by walking down Pennsylvania Avenue after the swearing-in ceremony to the White House. Uh, she was very candid publicly that Jimmy consulted her on political affairs and uh, that he asked her for advice on various issues. Uh, she was the very first uh, First Lady to take an office in the East Wing, which was normally used by the First Lady staff. Uh, during her time uh, at the White House, uh, the federal government officially recognized the role of First Lady as a federal position. Uh, she was also very involved in his second campaign uh, because at the time he was dealing with the Iranian hostage crisis. Uh, unlike uh, many former presidents and First Ladies, the Carters uh, never were interested in fame when they left the White House. Uh, they wanted a little bit more of a simple life and they returned to their hometown in Georgia. Uh, she ultimately formed the Carter Center along with her husband in 1982 in Atlanta, uh, where she has been a leading advocate for mental health, early childhood immunizations, human rights, and issues affecting women and children for decades. 
Uh, she's been given many awards over the years and was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame in 2001. Uh, today, uh, she continues her volunteer work, especially with Habitat for Humanity. And Rosalind and Jimmy just recently celebrated their 74th wedding anniversary, uh, continuing to make them the longest uh, married presidential couple, uh, which they beat out um, from George H.W. and Barbara Bush. Uh, they have four children, 12 grandchildren, and 14 great-grandchildren. Uh, Jimmy Carter once said, Rosalind is probably the most influential person in my life. Uh, for the next uh, and the last recipe um, is Rosalind Carter's peanut butter pie. Uh, so first you're going to preheat the oven to 400 degrees, uh, then mix a cup of powdered sugar and one and a half cups smooth peanut butter until it's combined, which was a little more difficult than what I thought. I suggest using a mixer. Um, set that aside. Um, in a saucepan, um, over low heat, stir together a half a cup of sugar, a fourth a cup of cornstarch, two cups of milk, three egg yolks, and an eighth a teaspoon of salt, salt until well combined. Uh, cook that and stir it constantly until thick, it thickens. Um, and when it has, remove that from the heat and stir in a teaspoon of vanilla and two tablespoons of butter until the butter is completely melted. Uh, set aside, um, let that cool a little bit, and then you'll prepare your meringue. Um, now to make your meringue, uh, take three egg whites in a bowl um, for your mixer and beat until the whites begin to foam. Uh, while beating, add a half a teaspoon of cream of tartar and a pinch of salt. Uh, put that on high and beat until the whites become glossy and little peaks form. Um, so then while the mixer is still running, slowly pour in three tablespoons of sugar um, and then add a teaspoon of vanilla. Continue to beat um, until you get uh, large little peaks, very stiff. Um, next, stir the peanut butter mix from earlier into the cooked filling mixture until completely combined. Uh, pour the mixture into a baked pie crust and spread meringue onto the pie filling. Uh, finally, bake that for about 10 minutes or until the meringue is lightly uh, browned. Uh, pie needs to be completely cooled before serving. Uh, this recipe was adapted from a grocery company's recipe publica publication featuring this as Rosalind's recipe. Um, you can also garnish with uh, chopped up Reese cups if you are a serious peanut butter lover. Um, so, uh, thanks y'all so much uh, for watching today. Uh, once again, happy birthday uh, to Sarah Polk. Um, and I hope that you'll try some of these recipes uh, for Rosalind Carter and the Polks. Um, and you can always comment um, and let us know how you like them. Um, so here's our pie and all of our recipes. So once again, thanks y'all so much and I'll see you next time.